welcome back to the Jack and Glenn channel. I'm Jackie. I'm her husband, Glenn. He is. He's my husband, Glenn. <laughs> and we're back with another review of Married at First Sight Season 10, Episode... Ocho. 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 Yeah. See. <laughs> See. That's <It's> Ocho. <laughs> Well, make sure you hit that subscribe button. Make sure you hit that bell notification so you don't miss any of our episodes. Also, check out some of our past episodes of Married at First Sight. So make sure you do that. Uh, we're going to jump into this um, this episode. But you got something to say first, don't you? I do. I want to thank everyone that's already previewed my song and downloaded it. And uh, you can still access the song via the link in our bio. So check it out and purchase the song. I'd appreciate your support and thank you for all the wonderful comments. Thank you. So episode eight. Episode eight. <laughs> episode. <laughs> Home is where the spouse is. Home is where the spouse is, man. I want to start with this couple, man. And I know we've been giving them a hard time and a rough time for the last couple of weeks, but Michael and Mika. M &M, yes, M uh, the Eminem connection. connection uh, kind of reconnected and they stepped back up uh, to the plate last night on a, on Married at First Sight and she still would give my dude a hard time though. I mean, but yeah. they, but they, but they, they are sleeping in the same bed now. They together, and Michael then worked his way back in the bed, and I don't see no fort between. There's no fort between them, but no. he, he's working his way back up in there, and he's saying all the right things. And, you know, she still be harping on him about the spice. You know, last night was about the spices, about pepper. It's just she just I don't know. She know how to communicate. I don't know that whole spice shopping thing was hilarious. <laughs> you know they're looking at peppers. He was like, "I guess I should get some more peppers." You you only use one pepper. Well, I guess we're gonna be using more we, we, since we, we out more. here pepper shopping. And they got several kinds of peppers. It's, and you said I need spices. Pretty much that's what he said, but he didn't say it. But yeah, well they together. Their families kind of interacted, and it was you know meshed well together. So it was good to see Michael and Mika really having an episode where they really didn't beef or didn't have any issues or any major problems. It was good. It was good. The housewarming party was cool. We saw them putting pictures together to put up uh, so, it, so it looked like they was married. It was, actually, all the couples did some decorating except for one. But um, the one that's not living together. That, living right. In. <laughs> <laughs> but they, you know, they put pictures together. They laughed about Michael putting the frame upside down. How you supposed to stand it up? And their family came over, and they had a, oh, before their family came, um, part at partly as a showing of um, unity. Yeah. Mika talked to Michael about wearing his ring and trying to understand again why why weren't you wearing your ring? And he was like, because I felt like I was failing. And she was like, well. So next time you mess up, next time you feel like you're failing, you're going to take the ring off. And she just brought back what any married couple knows when it comes to your ring. Your ring is a semblance of, of your bond and your commitment to each other. And so basically when you take it off, you're saying, I'm not committed. Mm -hmm. um, and she was like, you know, let's... First of all, we don't want no questions about the ring. But mo more than anything, I'm trying to understand why let's put these rings back on. Yeah, but you know they eventually put them back on, and they, they, and they also great. shared with the family, you know, why they didn't have them. So, uh, what was going on with them? So it's good that he put it back on, and now he feel like because he's feeling like they have gone past this whole um, ultimatum situation. Yeah, that he allegedly or did give. I look, I don't know. We don't know. I would like to see the footage. There's no footage. I, it gotta be. I, I'm telling there's, you. There's no footage. Anyway, anyway, but they've gone past that, and I, I like to see where the couple start taking the advice of Pastor Cal mm -hmm. and, and those the experts and they move it on. And so Michael and Mika are they took their experts advice and they're moving on and we could see the progression uh, and their relationship and how they have progressed and how they moved on um in the last week and a half, two weeks. So it's it's good to see where they're at. Yeah, the housewarming party had a good time and uh, both of their families were supportive. They're supportive of uh, what they're going through. Michael had a nice conversation with Mika's mom, Tamika. And she said, you know, Mika's a genuine person. I get that genuine vibe from, from you. And she just give, gave him really good words of advice and encouragement of how to move from this point forward. And it was good for him because he asked her, how should I take care or treat your, move, your daughter or take care? What should I do to make this relationship successful? Right. And her mom was basically, be patient. And the same advice Mika got beat from her mom too when she talked to her mom. Mm -hmm. Be patient. Mm -hmm. You know, be patient and, and work the process. It is a process. 
you know, when we get to another couple, I want to talk about the process too, but it's a process to get to where they needed to be at. And so they have to continue to just work the process um, and with Mika and Michael. So that's where their relationship is getting better because they're trusting the process. Right. You know, and even when he met with the guys and, the, and he told, and they told their, and she met with the girls and they told where they were at. Now, everybody was kind of shocked, surprised and happy for them mm -hmm. that they had made this progress because they saw what they were like in Panama. Right. So, hey, kudos to them. That's my couple of the episode right there. I don't care what nobody else. They, they have moved on and they, they, they get thumbs up for me. Yeah, they did good. And um, real quick, you briefly talked about how when the guys met together, the guys went out to eat and the girls went on a picnic. Yeah. And you could see Michael and Mika basically sharing the same thing with the guys and the girls. They both talked about how they progressed and how things have gotten better. We're in a better place. I feel more comfortable with my spouse. I'm feeling more at ease. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, it was rough at first, but it's getting better. Yeah, and that's, so that what she, and that's what she wanted. She wanted it just to get better and take time. And so I'll, I'm not trying to live in the past episodes, but I did, did this on Panama after day two, after the comment was made or day three had these conversations. They could have enjoyed their honeymoon just that much more. And so while we're right there, I know it's, uh, um, this is a rough one, but let's go ahead and hit it and get it done with. So while they're at the picnic, you know, uh, they asked Mindy how everything was going with her and Zach. And, you know, she shared Zach had moved in. And, um, you know, just where they're kind of on the rocks and we have a problem with, you know, they still have this problem with attraction and everything. And Mika was able to tell Mindy just to encourage her and say, you know, give it some time. Things can change because, look, it happened with us. Yeah, but that's if both people are trying to change it. And Zach right. is not trying to change. It doesn't seem that it do way. It doesn't seem certainly. that way, Zach. And, he, you know, they sat down and they talked and... And again, he's talking in circles. He, I mean, even when he was with the guys at lunch, he talked in circles. Tell they the little vignette or the little clip. Clip Austin was like, "Dude, dude, never gets to the point. <laughs> like, right. he never gets to the point. He's confusing the guys who's supposed to be supportive and to help him out. Even Michael tried to give him some advice. He didn't take anybody's advice. He like, oh, my clients can tell, everybody can tell, because you are looking pitiful. Right. And it, why don't you just move in with the young lady mm -hmm. and try to work it? It's an eight-week process. You're on week six. You have two. You have six weeks left, and you have not lived with your wife except for the honeymoon that made you. Mm -hmm. Dog, it's not going to get better for you being set. It's married. You know, we post a lot on our Facebook Facebook page or uh, in, in marriage first sight's group, and, and a lot of people were saying, "Look, it is married at first sight, mm -hmm. not dating at, at first, first sight. sight. Exactly. You dating, you can live apart. Y'all married to so live together." Like another couple who are married, we'll get to them in a minute, but they live in separate rooms. Right, right, right. And that's the that was one point that Pastor Cal made. He was like, it's a two-bedroom apartment. You know, you can move in and go into another bedroom. Um, I mean, I feel like Zach knocked the other guys off their feet when he was like, I didn't move in. Right, right. I mean, Derek was like, what? Derek was like really surprised, and he even encouraged Zach with the same thing Pastor Cal said. It was like... You have to be around each other. Yeah. How is less time together going to help you get to know each other? You have to be around each other. And because not only is Zach not living with her, they not exactly communicating either. So how am I going to get to know you? Look, she's doing everything. And he said, I'm in marriage by myself. That's, she, that's, that's a bad place to be at when yeah. you feel like you're in a marriage and you're the only one in the marriage. And that's what she felt like. She's the only one at the house. She's the only one cooking. She comes home. There's no one there. He doesn't even talk to her on a regular basis. Mm -hmm. So I understand if you were trying, if you, even if you didn't live with her, but y'all communicated on a regular basis, okay, you've tried to work it out. But you don't talk to her unless production or TV make you get together right. and have a conversation. That's not, that's not a relationship. But you know what? My top player is her best friend. Mindy's friend. Oh, bro. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. I love it. She gives it to Zach every single time. Like, yo, why you ain't moving the house shit? Why you not living with my girl? And, you know, she represented Maryland. You know, I, I got... I yeah, she had the flag I, I can for represent headband. Maryland. Represent Maryland on that. She had the flag that. for a headband. But she's... That was her friend, Mallory. 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 Mallory was on it. Yeah, Mallory was on it. Mallory was like, yo, dog, that's, you're not going to treat my friend like that. You signed up for this, and y'all will probably be family. We're not... This is not going to happen. So you need to... Everybody need that ride or die. Yeah, and, and in her vignette, she was basically like, I don't trust Zach. Yeah. I don't trust it. I don't trust that he's in it. I don't trust him. It, it's, it's shady. And um, real quick before we go to Mallory, too, again, uh, Mindy let Zach know. I feel like I'm, we're taking baby steps. It's hard for me to take these baby steps. But I'm going to try to keep pushing 
I'm in the process alone. You want to take baby steps, but you know, she noticed that he had his ring on. He did have his ring on. And he, she said, how do you envision this process? And he was like, well, I could see us hanging out more. He, still, oh. he wants to hang out with her more. Like, you should have been doing that. Like, it was zero from the honeymoon. But when they went to that local bar, yeah. Mallory was like, so, how's it going? Not living in an apartment with your wife? <laughs> you know, and, but that's the thing. He wanted to take baby steps, but didn't he know what he signed up for? Then it goes back to a lot of you guys, a lot of your listeners, and a lot of people who leave comments. I know Zach. Some of these guys were added on and addition, uh, added to the show. And they don't really didn't know what they were getting into. So that's why I'm saying Zach is just one of those guys. He's there like Matt was last year for TV. Yeah. Or as uh, Iris alludes to, Keith was for TV. I believe, I believe you need to, the show needs to pick people who actually want to be married at first sight and not to be on TV for TV appearances. Mm -hmm. They will try to get their come up because they're on TV or raise their social media standard. It's really, it it's really obvious. Is seeming that it way. It's very obvious that that is what Zach is there for. He doesn't want to connect with her. I wouldn't be surprised if Zach didn't have enough somebody else on the side. It's possible. I'd be, that he don't want to live with her because he has somebody else on the side. Now he should have got out of the process, but yeah, let's, Mallory read him yeah she, did. she she read him she shaded him about not living there she asked him what's your plan <laughs> basically what's your intentions with my friend and he was like i want to have more of a presence and be hanging out she's like mm, mm -hmm. okay at, at this point he's he's gonna have to show mallory and he's gonna have to show mindy more so than any of his words his presence and his his conversation right now is his trust with her is gone mm -hmm. the trust is gone he has to be in it right now. It has to be. He got to be from Missouri. He got to show her. Mm -hmm, the show mm -hmm. me. He got to show everything he does. Yeah. And, and, and not just tell her. Yeah. Um, and then we'll just add the other thing. So after they hung out at the bar, Mindy's friends came back to the house, mm -hmm. you know. And so she basically was like, they were like kind of going in on Zach again. Mm -hmm. And she was like, well, Ma <laughs> Mallory gave him a nickname, Zatch. <laughs> Zatch. Fake, a fake person. She called him Zatch. Uh, but she. Mindy was like, well, I kind of invited him over, so y'all don't grill him too hard. And I mean, they were nice, but they, you know, they did give him a little bit more at the, um, at the apartment. I just don't like the fact I invited him over. No, I know. It's you should, he should have just came after came. they you went have out. To give, yo, you shouldn't have to give your husband an invitation to come yeah. to, your, to your house. Yeah, yeah To your was... house. You don't give your husband an invitation to come to your house or your apartment. Yeah. Come on, dog. Nah, we're going over to, we're going back to the house. Come on. We're coming back to the house. Join us. Yeah. Or, or, or not even in that case. We're coming back to the house. See you there. And he should be like, okay, I'm going to come right, too. Right, see you there. Since we're supposed to be hanging out more. Right. Since it's supposed to be more of a presence. <laughs> we got two different cars, okay? See you there. So that should have been done there. Shouldn't yeah. even give him an option. When you invite somebody, you're giving them an option. Yeah. At this point, his he should have no option. Yeah, I agree. So uh, He took advantage of his option when he wanted to live apart. Yeah. <laughs> Mindy, Mindy and Zach are... They're still, to me, they're still on the incline, the decline, rather. Done. They're on, they're the, not, they're on the decline. Look, I'm going to say it. I can't even say they plateaued. I feel like they're, they're still on the decline. They're not going to say it. They're just riding this bad boy out. Eight weeks, uh, there's no way they stay together. And if she stays with him after this, boy, anyway. <laughs> so, okay, so we go from Zach and Mindy, where Zach didn't move in, to our couple that did move in, and they kind of took Pastor Cal's advice, even yeah. though he didn't really give it to them, but... Not that we know of. Yeah. Taylor and Brandon. I, I like this uh, with Taylor and Brandon. You know, we talked about it. Would you have told your friends of the situation? I what told my husband, knowing my friends, like she knows her friends. I think it was Brittany and Jasmine. Yeah. You know how your friends are. I, I promise you, I don't think I would have told them. I wouldn't have. Because they was like, he what? He said when? Girl, mm -mm. they was ready to go in on him. Oh yeah, you know, oh yeah. Even when we got the house warming, it was kind of like they stacked the deck. She had like big swole brothers coming in the house, oh, right? Yeah. You know, big swole dudes. And Brandon had no dudes there. Cause remember, he all he had was women. So if something really little broke off, he had no no backup <laughs> dude, whatsoever. Dude, he, he 
He had big buff and stuff, her friend there, and then the dog to keep humping her leg. He humping he, his leg. he owe it too. Yeah, he, he owe it too. The dog try to, the dog keep humping him. He, he gets more from the dog than he do Taylor. Well, I don't think he's trying to get enough. I'm not. Taylor, he's not. But you know, yeah. he, but the dog keep humping her leg, which is funny to me. He, and he even made a comment, you know. Man, I might well come to the dog. Which watching couples couch is funny because Jeffy was like, dog, that's you going too far, man. You know, you going too far. But um, you know, they sat down and had a conversation and it was going in on, on Brandon because as we mentioned, Taylor told her friends. So they she brought it up when they got the families got together. Mm -hmm. And, you know, Brandon's aunt saved him. Because it's she like, look, this is not Brandon's character. This, this, he was calling me. He apologized. He's really upset. Yeah, we talked it out. We talked it through. I told him what he needs to do. All right, and and he's been following advice. I just think this a this something's really switched off and on in Brandon because he seems so like a sweet guy. He seems like he wants to do right, but he can't keep his emotions in check. I found it hard to believe his aunt said I, from what I heard and was described, I've never seen Brandon act like that. <laughs> Maybe it was the alcohol talking. Maybe he got a little, little too much. But just the thing, he just—I promise you—he didn't just start drinking. No, he didn't. On the wedding day and on a honeymoon. So I dare say, it's a lot of people out there that your aunties, your uncles, your mama, your grandma ain't seen the ugly side of you because you ain't been pissy drunk around them. Right. You have a head of circumstance. I pro I promise you. That came from somewhere. And Auntie just probably ain't seen. Most people don't show their behind. Nah. <laughs> in but, front of their elders. And that's what I'm saying. Most of them. He, he just didn't show his behind. I'm, not, I'm sure this behavior is not the first time. Nah, this is the first time that it was yeah. caught on camera or was seen. Mm -hmm. You know, but you know what? I like Taylor. It took Taylor a long time, but she actually stood up for him. And towards the end of the conversation, like, yeah, we talked. We've been getting together. And then when her explaining or stepping up for him, we found out they live, they sleep in. Two separate rooms. Yes, he's in the apartment, but he stays in a separate he's room. He stays in a separate room, so it shows that she's still mad and, and she's still upset, but they're still working, trying to work through this thing. And even when she brought it up later, now, this is something that women do, that men just don't. If you say you forgive me and it's over with, stop bringing stuff up. She kept she kept bringing it up. If you forgave me, let it leave it, let it die. But I think... And you can see the frustration on his face, like, why are we talking about this again? But to me, she just brought it up to address the fact that we had this conversation, kind of like what the aunt said in her in her vignette. She was like, I think it's good that in this space, we all talked about it and got it out in the open and everybody was able to say what they wanted to say. And so Taylor bringing up later, she was just saying that, you know, whew, we got that out. You know, I want to see. And she's just reiterating to him. I want to see the nice, kind brand. Now, I think that was shady how she kept uh, she kept saying that. She could have just said it once. Now, I would have felt that way. Why you keep bringing up the Jekyll and Hyde? Now, talk about the situation. That's fine because we just talked about it in this group of people. But to keep giving me the Jekyll and Hyde, I don't want to see the Jekyll and Hyde. I'm don't checking. forget you got that uh, Jekyll and Hyde. And don't bring up that Jekyll and Hyde. She keep bringing it up. Mm -hmm. He's going to check out. And or she go see the high. More. Oh, he checked out right there. He cause he was like, uh huh. He yeah. gonna get the solid treatment so again. So yeah. don't be the dead horse. Yeah. Let it, to my thing is let it ride. And that's in any relationship. Don't be the dead horse. You talk to me. We are adults. You're grown. I understand your expectations. I understand what you want mm -hmm. as a husband. I am trying to meet your expectations because mm -hmm. I'm learning. Learning marriage. It's not a win loss situation in marriage because if the two are one and we're together, if I win, we both win. Mm -hmm. If you win, I win. You know what I'm saying? So it's not a a, a win loss, and I think sometimes couples go into relationships thinking it's or arguments that I have to win the argument, right. or I have to win this, and you better. No, it's not a win loss. Yeah, if you win the argument, then you lost. Yeah, so it's not a win loss, and so I think leave that dead horse alone, let it ride, and let Brandon be who Brandon is, and then you can make this decision after eight weeks and see the good Brandon or the bad Brandon. Yeah, and we know how that whole thing works out, but we're not gonna talk about yeah, that right now. Yeah, we're not gonna talk about that now. Yeah. Uh -huh. I think that's, that's all we have for um, Brandon and Taylor. Yeah. Let's go to, um, man, Austin and Jessica. I like Austin. I mean, smooth sailing. I, I do, too. I do, too. 
Austin is doing the right things. He, she works 14 hours. We saw Austin vacuuming the floor. We saw Austin attempt to cook dinner. It was much more than chicken because remember, all he could cook was it chicken. It was, yes. So he cooked spaghetti. He had some, look like some rice or some orzo and some mixed vegetables. She came home from 14 hours at the hospital. They said and ate. You know, you being a nurse, you're like, why she ain't take her scrubs off? Oh my <laughs> gosh, that irritated me so bad. I'm like, you, you worked 14 hours. God knows what you got on them scrubs. I, when I worked at the hospital, first thing I would do was take them scrubs off. Because <laughs> it just, the, the day was on it. Anything could have been on it. Ugh. But anyway, yeah. she sat down and ate. And she enjoyed the meal. Yeah. Um, uh, later, when the, when the friends come over, um, you know, they have a party at the house. They talk about how... Austin's being such a good husband and how Jessica gets up so much earlier than him and but he's he makes the bed he's doing things around the house to which his friends was like <laughs> you Austin makes the bed you know how much his dad used to get on him about making his bed and he never made it and he said see I'm changing she's changing he me. even to the point where he said I had left the house one day <laughs> And came yes. and came back and made a bit, but he's doing it for her, and that's what in relationships about. It's about doing it for what for your spouse, taking care of things. It's no defined roles in their relationship, right? You know, oh, you're the woman, so you got to clean, or you're the woman, you got to cook. He's being a good husband by making sure that he take care of the things, so she is not as tired. I've learned that in 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 in, in life that if you take care of the things, the simple things, and then the spouse may be able to take care of you a little bit later, if you know what I mean. Just saying. <laughs> what does that have to do with this? Anyway. <laughs> he's taking care of all things when she's not tired. Those 14 hour days, the, the long not the long hours she worked, and so he may want some um Any, payment later. So anyway, you might want to saddle up. <laughs> settle up. <laughs> yeah, he's gonna saddle up. I said settle. Oh. But anyway, <laughs> so um, I mean, what can you say about Austin and Jessica? They had a, their their um, friends meshed well. Yeah. Um, they had a conversation, and um, they even played beer pong in the, in the living room. Beer pong, they beer played pong in beer the pong in the living room. Like it was a bachelor pad. Like it was just chill. Like it they was had just, a table to put up. They had a table to put up and everything. <laughs> like like this is a fun couple. Like there's no argument. She hasn't seen anything. The biggest thing is the money, and she's not really too concerned about that. Because her thing was. I make more money than him. It's not like it's a permanent situation. It's temporary. And to make up the difference while I'm out there working my behind off for 14 hours, then he's cooking, he's cleaning, you know, he's making a bed. So I appreciate it. And that. he's gonna his income is gonna increase because it's just a new job. So while he's getting in his field, it is right now here, and it's gonna increase. But as a nurse, 14 hours, she has a unlimited uh, income potential mm -hmm. for being a nurse. Mm -hmm. So it's not like they're, they're going to be starving anytime soon. Right. You know? So they, they're doing well. And let's go to the complicated couple. They're complicated. Okay. Derek and Katie. Yeah. Derek, this issue he said on previous episode about not knowing after eight weeks if he can say I love her mm -hmm. comes from the fact to me is that because he's never been in love. He doesn't know what it takes. Uh, but his dad told him, like, look, involve the process. Be friends. Be, get there. Learn to, like, you can't fall in love. Dr. Cal says, as Pastor Cal says all the time. You grow in love. You grow in love. So as long, as much as you spend time with each other and be with the other, y'all get there. And he said, look, you should not have said that. His dad flat out told him, like. Oh, yeah. And yeah. I think we said that. We said that before. Yeah. He shouldn't have said that because she even said it to her friends. Like, he was like, I don't know. If I could say I love you or be in love with you in this eight weeks. And her friend was like, well, is that a deal breaker? You know? Yeah, her mom told her to relax and yeah, be patient. Yeah. But, what, but people, don't, what you don't, uh, I want to kind of psychoanalyze her for a minute. Because the other guy told her he loved her. Mm -hmm. And he made her feel some type of way. And that's what she wanted. <laughs> she liked that other guy. And because he told her he loved her, now it's like, oh, but the guy I'm married to don't even love me? And, and that's, that's the war she's having right now. Because she wants to be loved, and somebody that she really liked before the show told it's, her he loved her, and now this guy she's kind of forced to be with, but like, haven't told her she loved. Yeah, her. like what if he don't tell me he loved me, but this guy did, and, and I can't I, get back I, to him. I, I get I gave up on that one for this one. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, and that's her biggest dilemma right now, and I think that's where she struggles with. Instead of again, her mom told the same thing: go with the process. They get, this is what I like. They're getting good advice. It's yeah. not like anybody's giving them bad advice. 
they give them good advice like go with the process and fill it out your guys can be friends you guys can learn to grow in love and not fall in love. And Derek's dad said that. He was like, you know, I, I've had some good relationships. <laughs> I've had some bad relationships. Like, I'm speaking to you from experience. You know, I can tell you. And he was like, what it is is, okay, you have this, this wedding high, mm -hmm. this adrenaline rush. Because um, Derek was basically like, I don't have the tingly feeling no more. And he was like, well, that's what's going to happen. People expect that to be the whole marriage is not going to be the adrenaline rush you're coming down off the adrenaline rush and now it's time to build and you now you have a different set of emotions instead of that giddy giddy you mm -hmm. know tingly adrenaline rush now you have a different set of emotions that you have to settle in and get used to and um he really he really did i think he gave him really good advice and and derek looked like he was listening you know he was really soaking it in i'm still have hopes for these guys Yes. These two. I still have hopes for them. I think they can work through it. They can work past it. She can work past the whole, I'm not going to love you in eight weeks situation. And by the time in week eight weeks, I can see that they will continue to grow into the place where they need to be at. Even with her friends. One thing Katie did that I didn't like was when they, she told the, girl, <laughs> the girls to come in her room. She left Derek friend out there. And I understand why she did it. Like, you ain't going to go back and tell Derek what I said type deal. But she's still a young lady. And you leave her out there with all the guys. Don't be rude. Right. And and Derek didn't do the same. Right. You know, all the guys were there talking with Derek. Yeah, I thought that was kind of shady. Jessica and Austin didn't do that. Yeah. It was like, you know, let's cross cross the friends. We'll all sit here and talk. Um, because Jessica got some good advice mm -hmm. from Austin's friend Nicolette about him. And, you know, what they talked about him. So I think Katie really could have gotten something from... Oh, I might be getting the friends mixed up. Is Derek's friend Nicolette? I don't know. Yeah. But he left... She left her his friend, the female, out there with the guys. And it would have been good to bring her in, you know, after she finished venting to her friend. I mean, she didn't want the girl, the, the Derek's friend, to know that she got that fire, <laughs> as she said. <laughs> as she said. She, she yeah. said she got the fire, but... She did. Well, I mean, she said she got the fire, but she also was kind of like, uh, I had to initiate it. You know, I, I liked him to be more uh, forthright, yeah. forthright, you know. And um, and Derek didn't exactly tell his friends the same thing. No, he, he didn't. didn't, he he didn't, didn't tell, say the he same thing. They kind of say they, they uh, both mutually agreed yeah. to do it. That, not that she was the one pushing the issue. Yeah. Um, you know, but even in, in the midst of this, they have to talk about that, you know, about... Uh, how often and uh, how you want to initiate what you, so that's the whole again living together being married you have those conversations yeah. okay you know what's good for you what's not good what's a good time like, this is where this is your the signal when I want you know all that type of things that go along go along with it and they got to have those conversations and again Zach and Mindy's not having those so Derek yeah. and Derek and Katie to build on the relationship as they both their mom her mom his dad their friend said to do that, and even the advice that he gave Zach, it was like, dog, y'all gotta grow into this thing, mm -hmm. or you gotta be around mm -hmm. each other. So long he, as much as he spend time with Katie, they'll get better, and he'll be. I think he'll learn to love her, or at least learn to have that strong feelings, because the tingling feeling lasts for the week or two. But you got real life, you got other things you gotta put into exactly. it now. Your job, your work, uh, your job, your family, your friends, and incorporate that. It's not going to be like when you're on a honeymoon and you're looking at each other every day 24-7. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. um, you got other things. So he can still come home and laugh and joke and spend time with each other and have those moments where you feel that tingly feeling. Or when you wake up in the morning, you look at her and you feel like, you know, dang, she looked good today. You know? Well, <laughs> those type things. And so, uh, you know, when you tell her, I love you. And so that will grow as much time as you, as you spend time with each other. Yeah. And so They'll get there. Hopefully they get there. And hopefully she can get past this. You know, she got emotional because she's, I, she genuinely likes Derek. Yeah, she does. All she wants him to do is say, you know what? I love you too. But again, again, you want Derek to say, I love you. And after eight weeks. But is she ready to say she loved Derek after eight weeks? That's the question. You know, she hasn't said, oh, I'm, I'm going to tell him I love him but, after eight weeks. Yeah. But I th but she feels like she can get there. She feel like it's a possibility. It's a possibility. She feel like it's a possibility. Well, hey, easy good episode. Easy episode. It was ready. Uh, no really, no drama in this past episode. No, no, no major drama. I'm looking for episode nine next week. Might have a little some things kick up a little bit. But all in all, easy episode. Couples are 
uh, meeting their friends and family and friends, and it was good. Just make sure you hit that subscribe button. Make sure you hit that bell notification. Make sure you download her song. And, uh, Please. <laughs> uh, and just leave a comment in the comment section, and we'll get back to you. Um, it's good to be able to interact with you guys. And, um, hey, just, again, subscribe, hit the bell notification, and we'll talk to you guys next week. Bye. We had our matching brown on today. Did y'all notice? <laughs> Bye. Bye.